Hello and welcome to Train Signal. You are watching Preparing for Your Linux Plus Certification Exam. So you've made it. You've completed all the lessons, practiced the commands, and may have even destroyed and had to rebuild your testing machine. Congratulations on this essential rite of passage. In this lesson, we'll take a moment to go over a few things to help prepare you for the testing and certification process. First, we'll provide an overview of the exam with the number of questions, scoring, and the like. Then we'll tell you where to schedule and take the exam and discuss what to do if you need to retake it. Then we'll cover a few exam tips and tell you how to obtain your certification credentials after you've passed both exams. CompTIA Linux Plus powered by LPI consists of two exams, LX0101 and LX0102. This section of the course is dedicated to the first exam, LX0101. In terms of experience, CompTIA recommends candidates have the CompTIA A Plus and CompTIA Network Plus certifications and at least 12 months of Linux administration experience. Another thing to note is that exam objectives are also subject to change without notice, so be sure to obtain the latest exam objectives from CompTIA's website as listed on the screen. It's www.comptia.org slash certifications slash test prep slash exam objectives dot ASPX. The table on your screen shows the current domain breakdown. The first, 101, covers system architecture and constitutes 14% of the exam. 102 covers Linux installation and package management and that covers about 18%. 103 covers GNU and Unix commands and that represents 43% of the exam. And the final domain, 104, covers devices, Linux file systems, and the file system hierarchy standard. And that represents about 25% of the exam. This is a 60-question, 90-minute exam that has both multiple choice and fill-in-the-blank questions. To pass the exam, you need a 500 on a scale of 200 to 800. Now, scores are calculated using a statistical analysis that's also subject to change. Now, after you finish the exam, you'll receive a score report along with the score breakdown by section. Next, let's talk about where to take the exam. There are two testing centers where you can take your certification exam, either Pearson View or Prometric. You'll need to register for your exam at one of these testing centers. For Pearson View, their website is www.pearsonviewvue.com. Prometric is www.prometric.com slash comtia slash default. At each website, you can search for local testing centers as well. The current cost for the exam is between $150 and $168. Let's move on and talk about the exam retake policy. In the unfortunate event that you don't pass the exam on the first try, you can retake it immediately. However, if you don't pass the second time, or after any subsequent attempts, you must wait at least 14 days before trying again. Additionally, in the interest of protecting the integrity of the exam, there are a few rules to note. First, if you pass the exam, you can't retake it again without getting consent from CompTIA. Second, CompTIA beta exams may only be taken one time by each candidate. And finally, a test result found to be in violation of the retake policy will not be processed, which could result in no credit awarded for the test taken, and repeat violators will be banned from participation in the certification program altogether. On the next slide, we'll review some exam tips. Throughout the course, we've referred to the MAN and or info pages for Linux commands that you can access at the command line by typing in MAN followed by the command name. The command is also the same for info. I recommend you spend additional time reviewing the MAN pages. As we've discussed, the objectives for the exam do change from time to time, and the best way to be prepared is to know every detail, and the MAN pages provide them. And of course, you have all the lessons that you've completed. Use them. Review each one as many times as you need to. I also suggest that you spend some time on your test system practicing some of the demos that we went through. This repetition is key to helping you commit the material to memory. During the exam, you have the option to mark questions for later review. 
Doing so will ensure that you have enough time to complete the exam. I personally went through and answered everything that I was sure of, then I went back over the tough ones after those were completed. This strategy may work for you as well. Next, let's talk about what to do after you take and pass the exam. Again, the first half of this course is designed to cover the first exam, LX0101. But after taking and passing both exams, you can request your certificate from CompTIA's website, https www.certmetrics.com slash comptia slash login.aspx. You'll need some information from your score report, so be sure to hang on to it. At the website, you'll need to create an account, then you log in and follow their instructions to verify your information and submit the request. Your certificate and your ID card will come in the mail a little later. Mine didn't take more than a couple weeks. One of the good things about the new Linux Plus exam is that passing automatically qualifies you for the Linux Professional Institute Certification, or LPIC-1. And through their partnership with Novell, the Novell Certified Linux Administrator Certification as well. At the time you take your exam, you'll need to elect to have your test results forwarded to the LPI. Once they receive verification of your passing score, they will forward you an email with instructions on how to proceed and obtain your certification credentials. For the Novell CLA, you'll need to go to their website, which is http colon practicum.novell.com forward slash lpi 2 cla form php. Once you have access to CompTIA's site, you can download logos, but be sure to check on their usage policies as there are some restrictions on how you can display them. Another thing to note is that some people feel confident enough to take both exams simultaneously. I, on the other hand, decided to study for the first half, then take the first test, and then study for the second half, and then take that test. You'll have to decide which approach works best for you. Let's wrap up what we've covered on the next slide. In this lesson, we talked about certification exam details like the number of questions, scoring, and pricing. Then we covered the two testing centers where you can take the exam, Pearson View and Prometric. We also reviewed the retake policy along with some exam tips. We wrapped up with what to do following the exam to obtain your hard earned certification credentials. Thanks for watching, good luck on your test, and I'll see you in the second part of the course as we covered the objectives for the second certification exam.